um, class. In this video, we will continue with the last method, which is a Gauss Seidel. Okay, Gauss Seidel, right? Right. So, uh, before this, you already learn, or I will, I already show you the another two method, which is Gauss elimination and the decomposition. Okay. So make sure between all these three, you can differentiate it because all of it have a different steps, different approach. So like I said before, I mean, when you get a question and the question asks you to use a certain, certain method, for example, the question asks you to use, um, to solve by using Gauss animation, but you answer it by using Gauss Seidel. Even though, yeah, even though, eh, even though your answer is correct, okay, maybe, yeah, even though you use the different method, your answer will be correct. But you didn't get any marks for it because of what? Because of you use a totally different method from the question asked. So make sure you understand, you remember the steps of each of method, lah. Okay. Alright, so now we proceed with the last method in this week, uh, in this chapter, or oh, sorry, in this topic, uh, which is a uh, Gauss Seidel. Okay, so the first thing first for the Gauss Seidel, what you need to do is, you need to know what is what the mean by strictly diagonal dominant matrix. Okay, what is it? If you are still remember for the last week, week one, I have I given to you the short question, right? And the question and the short question is a uh, is about diagonally dominant, diagonal dominant. Okay, so what's the diagonal dominant? Okay, you can refer to the week one page slide, lah. Okay, but now what means by strictly diagonal dominant? Okay, that the another keyword extra here strictly okay so by referring to the slides you can refer to your slides what's mean by the strictly diagonal dominant is the magnitude of diagonal element okay ataupun diagonal entry in a row is larger than the sum of the magnitudes of all other entries in that row. Ah, understand or not? Okay, faham ke tidak? Alright. So, uh, this is what means by strictly diagonal dominant in the, in the sentence lah. Okay, in the sentence means that uh, dalam ayat ni so what's mean by there is the magnitude of diagonal dom, diagonal entry in a row okay is a larger than the sum of the magnitudes of all others entry in that row ha faham tak okay tapi keyword dekat sini magnitude lah so you need to know what's a magnitude actually what is a magnitude magnitude is um in the simple word i can say that um we consider a positive value of the number lah Okay, magnitude is denote like this. For example, inside here you have 5. So, magnitude here is 5. If you have a negative 5, that's mean the magnitude here is 5. Ha, 5 juga. So, means that magnitude is something positive value. Eh? Okay, it cannot be negative. It must be positive because it's magnitude. Okay. Alright. So, now, okay, I will show you in terms of mathematics sentence lah ataupun in the mathematical equation what's it mean by magnitude or what's it mean by strictly diagonal dominant matrix okay for our example you have this matrix okay so now you can see this is the matrix 3 by 3 and first find out where is your diagonal okay what's your diagonal Okay, this is the diagonal, right? This is the diagonal. Okay, and the entry at the diagonal is 6, negative 9, and also negative 7. 
Okay, so now we will check one by one. We will check uh, first with uh, start first with the first row, second row, and the third row. So you look at the first row. Okay, you look at the first row. Okay, this is the first. I mean, um, how I can say? Eh? Um, in the first row, the magnitude at the diagonal entry. Okay, so means that this is the diagonal entry for the first row right is it okay this is the the diagonal entry for the first row and this is the diagonal entry for the second row and this is the diagonal entry for the third row okay so now we look we look at first for the first row right so there must be okay the magnitude of the diagonal entry the magnitude of the diagonal entry which is six lah okay magnitude of the diagonal entry in the law in a row must be larger must be larger okay must be larger or greater than sum of the magnitude okay sum of the magnitude for all others in that row maksudnya kalau kat sini num okay this is the diagonal entry and the diagonal entry must be greater than the summation okay hasil tambah antara dua entry yang lain so dua entry yang lain kat sini adalah 2 dan 3 Magnitude juga eh, magnitude So you need to do magnitude So then we check, betul tak? 6 is greater than 5 Correct or not? Yes, correct lah So maksudnya simbol ni betul lah Simbol ni bermaksud uh, 6 is greater than Or larger than 5 Okay, so Means that the condition number 1 is fulfilled Okay so now we proceed with the second row. Okay, second row, the diagonal entry here is negative 9. But, you must put a magnitude, right? Because it's no magnitude, so we will consider it as a positive value. So then, we not, we want to check whether 9 is greater than the other two numbers or not. Okay, the other two number here is negative 1 plus 4. So means that 9, is it greater than... 5 5 kan this negative one we will consider as a positive because it already have I mean it's already have a magnitude okay so means that it's a no longer negative it is positive so 1 plus 4 is 5 so is it 9 greater than 5 yes correct okay and then we use this, we we do it for the third row so this was negative 7 so yeah still is a magnitude right Okay, then check whether it's greater than or not with the summation the other two number. 7 is greater than 3. Correct. So therefore, this matrix is already a strictly diagonal dominant matrix. Um, as in matrix ni dah, dah, dah fulfill lah. It's a diagonal or strictly diagonal dominant. Okay. They have also an example of the uh, matrix that's not strictly diagonal dominant. For example, okay, what's um, When the question asks you to use a Gauss idle, the first thing first is you need to you need to check the strictly diagonal dominant. If not, okay, if the matrix is not diagonal dominant, you need to do something. You do. You need to do something. Okay. So let's say I give you example on how if the matrix is not diagonal dominant. For example, negative one, negative nine, four, three, zero, negative seven, six, two, three. Okay. So now we want to check whether this matrix is diagonal dominant or not. Okay. So we do it the first row first. So this is the diagonal right okay so you actually you can roughly you can see from this you tak perlu buat equation macam tadi pun sebenarnya tapi uh, i just want to show you but actually you can refer directly from the matrix you can see that suppose okay suppose eh suppose for the first row this number must be greater than another two for the second row this number must be greater than another two and for the third row this number must be greater than another two but if you can see here, it's not happen. Kan? Betul tak? Untuk row 1, nombor paling besar dia 9. Sepatutnya 9 kat sini. Sama juga dengan row 2. 
row 2 suppose 7 here must be here in the middle one same goes for row number 3 suppose 6 here should be at the at the back okay at the last element okay so tak apa okay i just write first okay for example here is it magnitude 1 is it greater or not with a uh, summation of these two totally not right kan betul tak ni 1 this one is 13 so no maksudnya ni salah lah ni is less than suppose same thing for second row and the third row okay so now uh, because of the question ask you to use a golf idea so when when the question ask you to use a golf idea so that matrix must be a strictly diagonal dominant first you cannot proceed your calculation Oh, kalau dia punya tu belum diagonal dominant ataupun strictly diagonal so what we need to do is okay we will interchange the row ha, kita kena tukar row we need to make it a changes on the sequence of the row lah okay this is the new matrix okay you boleh swap okay you boleh tukar antara row dengan row ha, boleh tukar eh so you can see that um, like I said before if the row number 1 okay if the row number 1 means that the first number must be greater than the other two for the row number 2 the second number must be greater than the other two and for the third row must be the last number must be greater than the other two so you can see that for the row 1 okay from this matrix right for the row 1 or which row that supposed to be as a row 1? Row 3, is it? Row 3 because the number 6 is in front here. So, means that 6, 2, 3. So, 6 is greater than another. 2 number, 2 plus 3 is 5. So, 6 is greater than this. So, this is supposed to be your row 1. How about your row 2? So, your row 2 suppose this one. Okay, so negative 1, negative 9 and 4. So you can see that 9 is greater than summation 1 and 4, which is 5. Okay, 9 is greater than 5. And then the last one will, so you have another one row, which is 3, 0, negative 7. Okay, so you can see that 7 is a greater than summation these two. So when you see that this is the diagonal entry 6 is greater than 5 9 is greater than 5 7 is greater than 3 okay okay so means that this is your strictly diagonal domain so you need to read or you need to intention the row to get your strictly diagonal dominant then baru you will proceed with the algorithm or with the steps okay so this is the first step that you need to do okay all right so i give you uh, okay so this is the first step all right so now if you refer to the slides okay, maybe you can hear this video while you browsing your slide okay so if you refer to your slides the second step is to make it your equation in become iterative uh, maksudnya daripada linear system tadi you jadikan x1 equal to what uh, x2 equal to what x3 equal to what and so on so um, I will show you okay, I will show you by using the example okay, saya akan tunjukkan melalui example lah okay, so you can refer to your slide because of this example is just from your slide okay, so example so the question asks you to solve the following linear system by using Gauss Seidel. Okay, so this is the linear system. And then, you have a f another 
question I mean, no, this is the one question Tapi dah ada satu lagi Information, okay Start the Initial gas With At zero Equal to zero And Stop The Iteration When Less than zero zero one. Okay, so I read the question back. Okay, so the question asks you to find or to solve the following linear system by using Gauss idle. Okay, to using Gauss idle, and this is the linear system plus x one plus three x two minus x three equal to fifteen to x one minus x two plus ten x three equal to thirty x one plus three sorry x one plus eight x two plus x3 equal to 20 and then start the initial gas with the x0 equal to 0 and stop the iteration when okay, when xk minus xk minus 1 infinity less than 0 0.00 so maybe some of you, you do not understand what's the this meaning what of it okay apa maksud dia okay later i will show you okay so now the first step first is you need to transform this linear system into matrix ataupun yeah matrix A lah okay just a matrix for the coefficient yeah. so transform it become 12, 3 negative 1 and then 2, negative 1, 10 1, 8, 1 okay so this is the matrix that you get after you transform from the linear system okay so now you need to you need to check lah kan you need to check whether the matrix is trilogy dominant matrix or not okay so you can see that 12 is a greater number compared to summation between these two number right so for the row 1 is okay dah okay lah row 1 but for row 2 and row 3 suppose this number must be greater than another summation this two number but it's not happen here right okay tak berlaku kat sini sama juga dengan row 3 so maksudnya you kena buat apa you will interchange between row 2 and row 3 so your diagonal dominant now is 12 3 negative 1 1 8 1 2 negative 1 10 so this is your matrix your strictly diagonally dominant matrix okay so after you change into this matrix then baru you will force it lah okay so you need to make it a changes first then baru you will force it in the calculation so now your equation now um, so equation you sekarang okay this is your equation back okay so this is the first one okay the first equation so now your second equation is it will be x1 plus 8x2 plus x3 equal to 20 uh, it's no longer yang secondary sekarang because we already switch right uh, row 2 row 3 dah switch so row 3 now will become row 2 and row 2 now will become row 3 Right, so means that this is the first equation, second equation, then now, uh, and then this is the last one, the third equation. So what we need, uh, what what the, uh, what the next thing that you need to do is now we we make it a uh, iterative sequence. Okay, to iterate. So we need to create a same a sequence. Okay, so for the first one is a x one first x one equation. So x one, okay, for x one, okay. Uh, listen carefully for x1 we will refer to row 1 okay for x2 later on we will refer to equation number 2 or row 2 for x3 we will refer to the last equation which is equation 3 or row 3 lah okay so now we want to make it for x1 so by referring to the row 1 or the first equation just now so you will trans 
you will move all okay you akan pindahkan semua number yang berada di sebelah kiri sekarang ni ke belah kanan you just leave your x1 at the right oh sorry at the left hand side okay kalau saya sekarang left hand side eh okay saya sekarang left hand side ni belah kanan saya ni belah kiri so you will left only x1 the rest you need to bring to the right hand side so now 15 is already at the right hand side okay so 15 here so bring 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 all so bring what okay bring negative 3 x2 and then bring plus x3 okay plus lah kan so I pindah sini okay then you have another one which is 12 12 so what we do divide by 12 Okay, so this is the alternative equation for the first one, which is for the x1 lah. So then, you do it the same thing for x2. So for the x2, you need to refer to the second equation. So same thing, what I mean by same thing here is you bring all the other number to the right hand side. So 20 is already at the right hand side. So and then you bring negative x1, you bring negative x3 and then you divide by Okay, and then the last one is x3. So, x3 will be 20. Oh, saya sebalah terbalik eh. Ni 30 lah sepertinya. Okay, 30. 30. Okay, and then minus 2 x1 plus x2. And then it's divided by 10. Okay, so I already have a 3 equation. And the first one x1, x2, x3. So, means that to find your x1, we will use this equation. To find your x2, we will use this equation. To find your x3, we will use this equation. And then, okay, like I said, this is the iterative equation. So, means that, dia kena, dia kena keep going. Uh, iterative maksudnya macam, after you finish calculate it, you will calculate it again, again, again. So, you can ada something yang buatkan dia sentiasa rotate ataupun sentiasa bergerak lah, iterate. So, that's why if you can see at the slide, they have a K up here. Okay, so K here represent the iteration. So, maksudnya bila K kosong, berapa? K satu, berapa? Bila K dua, berapa? Dia akan setiasa meningkat lah. Okay. Okay. So, okay, for example, let's say you have K zero, K zero. So, a, you will get the value for S2, S3. So, after you get a value for S2, S3, you substitute here. So, the overall, you will get a value lah. Later on, you akan dapatlah satu value, right? And this value is a value for S1. Okay? So, maksudnya, value ni adalah value baru untuk S1. So, this S1 is, it must be K plus 1. K plus 1. Here is K because you do, you use the original value first. I mean, you use a old value. After you substitute the old value here and then you calculate lah 15 minus blah 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 divided by 12, you get the value right. And this value is a new value, a new value for x1. That's why x1 must be k plus 1. k plus 1 means that the, va the new value. So same thing for this one. Okay, for this one now, you have x1 and x3, right? So your x1 is must be k plus 1. Kenapa k plus 1? Because you will get from this. Okay. What the value that you have here, you will substitute here. So, since this is k plus 1, therefore, this one also must be k plus 1. But, for x3, it's remain as k. Maksudnya, you belum calculate lagi x3 kan kat sini, you just calculate x1. So, x1 yang you dapat nilai baru. Tapi, x3, you still remain the same. You remain the old value. So, that's why it's k. But after you calculate all this three, you will get a value and the new value here is for x2. Therefore, x2 is k plus 1. Okay, alright. So, how about the last one? Okay, cuba, cuba dulu lah sebelum ni. Cuba fikir. Apa sepatutnya berada? I, I mean, uh, suppose x1 ni power k, okay, plus 1. x2 ni sepatutnya apa? Okay, so for x1, x1, it must be k plus 1 because you already have the new value here how about x2 
X2 also K plus 1 Because you already calculate here You already get the new value here So we will substitute the new value for both And of course bila you dah calculate You akan dapat nilai yang baru And then that one is a 4K plus 1 For X3 Okay Right Okay, so now, okay, I will show you, okay, we will try to solve it, okay, I will try to, to answer this question. So, to make it easier for the Gauss Sider, what we need to do is, you have a table, okay, to make it is more, uh, what we call, kemas lah, tidy, okay. Okay, you have a column, okay, so the first column is a K, okay, to denote as a, the iteration itself. And then X1, K, X2, K, X3, K, and the last one is a column for the stopper. Okay, kita boleh katakan stopper ataupun error. Okay. Alright, so if you can see your question just now, okay, it say that the iteration or the initial Start with at 0 This means your K eh Kat atas ni maksudnya K U kosong So K 0, 0 So maksudnya Okay we start first with K 0 Okay with, with K 0 When K 0 So X 1 0 X 2 0 X 3 0 Means that you just substitute 0 into this K lah Okay So all of it is R zeros. Okay, for now, okay, because this is it, it get it from your question, eh? Bukan saya yang tentukan, bukan kamu yang tentukan. We get it from the question, and the question asks you, uh, and the question mention that initial gas is zero. Okay, so means that all of all of it, these three number is zero. We are start with zero first. So then, what's mean by x k minus x k minus one? So the same thing. You just substitute K0 into this K. Therefore, here kat sini apa? At 0 minus X power of negative 1. So, okay, my question. Do you have any value for X negative 1? Do, don't have, right? Because you start with at 0. You start dengan X kosong. Bukan X negative 1. Maksudnya X negative 1 tak ada pun value dia. That's why... They have no value yet for this one. Tak ada lagi value. Sebab tu kosong. Kalau you tengok slide, kat sini kosong. Okay. So now we proceed to the second row. And the iteration now will be 1 lah. Okay. Your K will be 1. Okay. So now. Uh, kat sini lah calculation dia. So bila K tu 1. Means that you want to calculate what? X11 lah. Okay. X11. So. By using this equation, x1. So, what we need to do is, you will replace this k with, gantikan k dengan apa? Gantikan k ini dengan kosong. Sebab apa? Sebab kita nak calculate x11. Kalau you, kalau you replace k ini dengan 1, dia akan jadi x12. Betul? So that's why we replace with 0 first kat sini. So that's why uh, and then so you will get x11 lah. So when you replace k0 means that all of this will be 0. Sama juga kat sini kena kosong, sini kena kosong. So we have 15 minus 3. So this one x20 right? x20 and you refer to your table just now. x20 is 0. Okay, so you can just substitute 0 here. And then plus x3, same thing, x3, 0. So x3, 0 just now, 0. So 0. And then divide by 12. So you have only 15 over 12. So you can use your decimal point. Okay, 15 over 12 is 1.25. Okay, 1.25. So, you substitute here into your table. And one more thing. Um, in mathematics, because they have, we will we, we play with a decimal point, right? So, to make it your answer accurate, uh, I suggest you to do up till 
four decimal point. So means that if you have one point two five just now, you add on another zero zero to get it four decimal point. Okay, for all calculation, for all calculation means for all. I mean, in your quiz, in your test, in your final, you must be you must using four decimal point. Okay. Right, so then we already get your S1 So we post it with the S2 So for S2 you use the second row So now your S2 1 Is equal to 20 Minus S1 1 Ah, tengok mesu dia Kat sini sebab you replace K0 kan K0 So kat sini dah K plus 1 So means that it no longer S1 0 It will be S1 1 x 1 1 minus x 3 0 divided by 8 so 20 minus x 1 1 x 1 1 ok you bukan tengok dekat atas you akan tengok dekat sini lah sebelah dia because you already calculate x 1 1 so means that every time you you calculate you update the value so maksudnya untuk yang latest Bila, once you dah ada value latest You akan using that That value lah So 20 minus 1.25 Bukan lagi kosong eh Bukan lagi kosong Because now it's more x11 So then x3 0 still 0 lah Over 12 Sorry Over 8 So minus So 20 minus 1.25 Over 8 so you should get 2.3438 Okay Alright, okay And then the last one for the X3 here Okay, for X3 1 So 30 minus 2 X11 plus X21 X21, okay X21 Divided by 10 So 30 minus 21.25 Plus X21 just now What we get 2.3438 Over 10 Okay so 30 minus 21.25 Plus 2.3438 Okay divided by 10 So you should get 2.9844 2.9844 Okay, so you finish fill up for the K1 baru Ah, Banyak lagi macam ni Macam mana nak tahu bila nak stop Ah, Macam I mean until when Until which K Until what K We will stop the calculation Okay that my question So that's why we have a stopper here Ah, This is as your stopper lah Okay for this the last column Is as a guide for you To know when you want to stop Okay, you will stop. Okay, you will stop until you reach, until you reach 0.001 or less than 0.001. Maksudnya, you kena calculate sampai you sam sampai lah you dapat value ni ataupun lagi kecil, lagi kecil. You tak boleh lagi besar. You kena stop sampai this you dapat ataupun lagi kecil. Okay. So now, uh, ramai tanya, okay, ramai DM saya tanya apa maksud kat sini, kenapa value dia sekian-sekian. Okay, so now, what's mean by this one? Okay, so you have three value, right? You have S1, S2, S3. Actually, for this column, it's an error column, error. Error tu maksud apa? Nilai baru, tolak, nilai lama ataupun old value minus, eh, sorry, new value minus old value. Okay, that, that uh, then we will get the error lah. So the new value here is this one lah, the latest one. The old value is the above it. Okay, the old value yang berada di atas dia lah. So you will minus one by one. So therefore you will have three value. Uh, Mana ni datang three value tu macam ni. Ni S1. So you have 1.25 here right. Okay, 1.25 minus zero. So you have 1.25. So that one the first value that you have 1.25. Okay, the second one, 2.3438 minus 0. So, you have 2.3438. So, that one is second value. 
and the third one is 2.9844 minus you know you have two point you will get 2.9844 that one the third value so among these three value okay among these three value which one that are the largest one which one the third one the, the last one so the last one will be the error here okay the last one will be the error here Okay, so this is how we get this value. I mean, the value for the the error here. Okay, what's it? Yeah. Uh, okay, so then then you can see that two point nine eight four four is greater or less than zero point zero zero one. It's greater, right? Greater. Therefore, you will proceed with the second iteration, ataupun K two pula. Ah, tu maksud dia maksudnya selagi you tak dapat nilai yang sama 0.01 ataupun lagi kecil lagi kecil so you need to proceed your iteration until you get that value so you akan calculate lah benda yang sama by using the same formula ok the same formula and then how to get this value ok how to get this value ok means that macam tadi you akan dapat step satu ni akan dapat value kan kat sini you akan dapat value ni value ni value so what you do this value minus with this value okay the the new minus the old one the new minus the old one the new minus the old one so you have three different value and among these three you choose which one the largest value the largest one okay the largest one and then you put it here and then you check whether that one is greater than or less than 0 0.001 kalau dia greater you need to proceed k3 if it's already less than or equal means that you can stop your calculation okay so after you start your calculation your final answer you must be you must write in term of this one lah okay because our objective is to get the value of x so you need to write what is the value for x that you get for the last for the last okay for the last okay all right so this is how uh, the algorithm for the gauss idol um, okay one more thing that i want to highlight here is um yeah this is error right okay this is error okay let's say eh? let's say eh? uh, i hope that you you watch video ni Betul-betul, uh, I mean jangan separuh-separuh Takut you salah faham Let's say Let's say You have a value here is negative Anggap 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 eh? Anggap ni negative So We cannot We cannot What we call uh, We cannot consider it as negative We need to consider as a positive That's why you can see They have a modulus value eh, Sorry Modulus sign here So modulus sign here is represent that all the value must be positive right so maksudnya kalau sini negative we will still consider it as a positive okay because of error cannot be negative error mana boleh negative you belajar fizik pun dulu you tahu kan error tak boleh negative error must be positive okay alright cuma maksudnya bila error tu negative dia memasuk dia reduce jadi lah satu panjang tu dia ada error so maksud error dia read, bila error dia negatif bermaksud panjang dia makin berkurang lah bukan makin bertambah ha, tu maksud uh, positif negatif kat situ tapi kita tak nak kisah dia negatif positif we want we just want to consider the value that we have okay right okay alright so this is about the ghost idol so I hope that uh, you get it what I explained just now mostly uh, mostly is about this one lah kat sini ramai tanya saya kenapa value dia sekian-sekian so this is how how the process of the 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 what we call the gauss idol algorithm okay all right so you can proceed with the calculation they have another you will start until k5 okay until k5 okay until k5 kat sini you akan dapat error dia 0. 0.0005 so you can see that you have extra zero here right suppose is only only 0 0.001 so therefore 0 0.0005 is less than lah is already less than 20.001 so 
so we will stop at iteration k equal to 5 okay and then you can proceed lah you can try by yourself another one example that we have here in the slides and then also the exercise okay all right okay so i will see you next week see you see you means in visual okay